we are now going to look into the nature of light. Now you know that everything around us is driven by the energy that we get from light, particularly sunlight. Right? Now energy is carried by light that is clear. But if I take a bullet and I shoot it, you see that bullet carries energy. Bullet is a particle. But a tsunami wave also carries a huge amount of energy. But that is a wave. So energy can be carried both by particles as well as by waves. So what is light? Is light a particle? Is it a wave? This question was haunting scientists for thousands of years. So they kept wondering which one is it? And does it matter? Yes, it matters a lot. For example, this ball is a like a particle. If I throw this ball, you catch it. When you catch it, your friend clearly cannot catch it, right? One person will catch this ball. But when I speak, sound is a wave, your ear catches it. So you hear it. But at the same time, your friend can also hear it. What does that tell you about waves? Waves are distributed. Whereas particles like this ball or bullet, they are concentrated at a particular location. And whether light is a wave or a particle matters. Okay. So this was something people kept debating and arguing for a long time. And Newton, who did a lot of experiments with light, he concluded that because light travels in straight lines, it could not be a wave. He claimed that light must be a particle. You know Newton's famous experiment where he took white light and split it into colors, right? Spectrum of colors. He imagined it as a series of particles coming in and then splitting up into different colored particles or different particles like this. Okay. So this idea that light is made up of particles was something Newton proposed and for 100 years after Newton, scientists believed that light was indeed made up of particles. Until 1800, Fresnel and Young argued that light was a wave. Thomas Young came up with an experiment where he had two holes through which he passed light and this demonstrated that light produced a pattern which we call interference pattern like this and this kind of interference pattern can only be explained if you assume that light is a wave. So they showed that there are experiments that can only be explained if you assume light is a wave. So after that a lot of scientists started to believe that light was a wave but what kind of wave was it? In 1860 Maxwell united a lot of laws that had been discovered in electricity and magnetism and he showed that that led to an equation, a wave equation, an electromagnetic wave equation. And that electromagnetic wave that it described had a speed 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second, exactly the speed of light. So he concluded that light was a special kind of wave, an electromagnetic wave. But not just light, not just visible light, a whole spectrum of electromagnetic waves became possible and Hertz showed that there are waves called radio waves with very, very long wavelengths and later they discovered X-rays and gamma rays with very, very short wavelengths. So an entire spectrum of electromagnetic waves were discovered and visible light was just a tiny part of that spectrum. So by this time, 1870s, scientists were convinced that light was definitely a wave. But in the next 20 years or so, this entire certainty that light was a wave came crashing down. By the 1880s, the study of heat had evolved into an exact science that we call thermodynamics. Now, as people started looking at hot objects, they found that hot objects radiate light. You know that when you look at coal, burning coal, it is basically red. 
So what does that mean? It is actually sending out red light. If you take an iron rod and put it on a fire, you will see that the rod after some time becomes red hot. What does it mean rod is red hot? It is sending out red frequency light. But if you increase the temperature, you can make that rod blue hot, which will mean that it is sending out blue light. In fact, if you look at stars, our sun is a yellow star, but there are stars that are blue in color. There are stars that are red in color. So the temperature of the object decides the nature or the wavelength of light that is coming out. And what do scientists do when they look at the relationship between two different parameters? They draw a graph. So when they drew a graph about the intensity of light coming out versus the wavelength of light coming from a hot object, for each temperature they got a graph that looks like this. As the wavelength decreased, the intensity increased up to a peak level and then it would decrease back to zero. For 4000 Kelvin, 3000 Kelvin, 5000 Kelvin, this was the observed fact. Okay? But the wave theory of light predicted that as you reduce the wavelength, the intensity must keep on increasing all the way up to infinity. Clearly, this does not happen. This is what is actually happening, which means thermodynamics is disagreeing with the wave theory of light. But it's not just thermodynamics. A new set of experiments that we call photoelectricity, even this disagreed with the wave theory of light. What is photoelectricity? When you shine light on a metal plate, electrons are pulled out of the metal and ejected out. So this light has energy and that energy is used to eject out electrons. When you look at the number of electrons that are ejected out by this light, wave theory says that it is going to be a straight line. As you change the frequency, the number of electrons that are ejected out will actually just remain constant for a given intensity. Why? Because wave theory of light says that frequency has no relationship with energy. Intensity on the other hand has relationship with energy. So lower intensity should produce less number of electrons. Higher intensity light should produce higher number of electrons. But it should not vary with frequency. So it should be a constant straight line. So this is what the wave theory was saying. But actual observation, what does it say? The actual observation shows that there is a threshold frequency below which, whether you are talking about low intensity or high intensity, Below this, there is no electron being ejected. So below this threshold frequency, no electrons come out at all. Now that was not something the wave theory was saying. But not just that, basically as you increase the frequency for a given intensity, there is actually a slight dip as well. So the graph clearly, these graphs are very different from that graph, right? Because this graph goes like that and then there is a sudden fall to zero. So the observed facts was very different from the wave theory. So now here we have a situation where thermodynamics and photoelectricity says that the wave theory is wrong. But we have diffraction interference experiments which have shown that wave theory makes sense. So one set of experiments says wave theory is the way we have to understand light. Another set of experiments says there is something wrong with the wave theory. So scientists were very puzzled. How do we resolve this? 